Why do you think the devil? I'm just going to ask a question. You want to raise your hand? That's cool. We, we, we're teaching, right? We're we teachable today. Why do you think the devil doesn't want you to pray? Huh? Say that again? Somewhat. But the devil doesn't want you to pray. I'm going to tell you why. Because when you clap your, when you clap your hand in prayer, it's a declaration of war against the devil's camp and his kingdom. And the devil knows if he can stop your prayer life, and then you can't declare nothing against him. It's a declaration of war, of battle, because prayer works. David Wilkinson always used to say, God will make a way for a praying man. Prayer, when you clap those hands, when you put these hands together against the devil, why you think worship and prayer in the Old Testament was so effective? They, they first pray. They said, Lord, come to the battlefield with us. And then they send the worshipers out. It's nothing new in the New Testament. We pray and we worship and we go into the battlefield. You with me? We try to make new inventions. We try to create man-man inventions when everything is already in the Bible. You try to create new stuff. You know, well, I'm going to do it this way because, you know, Julio told me this works in his house. <laughs> I spoke to Fred on the phone, and Fred told me, you know, you know, this is how he pray. Get your own prayer life. Get your own language. Get your own rhythm from heaven. Let your own hand clap with the one in heaven. Don't get Julio's. Get your own story. Get your own testimony. Get your own prayer life. Get your own worship going on. I don't care if you sound like a dead cat. In heaven, it sounds like glory. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> like the worship says today, except Laura. Meow. <laughs> 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 I was like, it must be hungry. <laughs> Get the donuts on the back. Declaration. Declaration is letting the devil know, I'm coming into the battlefield. I'm coming for you. When you, when you cast your hands together in prayer, you're letting the devil know, I just declare war. Because prayer is an act of war. Spiritual warfare. Come on, Come on people. Don't, don't, don't. Don't make me amen myself. <laughs> amen. Listen to it. To be right with God often means, often means, to be, to be right with God, it often means to, to be in the battlefield with the enemy of your soul. I hear Christians say, I'm neutral. Where did you learn that from? I'm neutral. Neutral for what? Either you're in or you're out. <laughs> Either you were God or you're not. There ain't no neutral. I'm neutral. Listen, to be right with God, to be right with God, it's just simple. You know, it's the attacks of the enemy. Listen, when you're right with God, the attacks of the enemy are a confirmation that you are heading the right direction. You okay today? Okay, girl. That's a little, you were a little slow yesterday. I'm trying to hook you up. Now, let me ask you a question. There's two different churches in the planet. With me? Are you part of the crowd or you follow Jesus? Jesus had the crowd always follow him, but never went the extra mile. The crowd never got in the boat. The crowd never crossed on the other side. The crowd, they came to get what they wanted and then they left. What, what church are you? Do, do, do you part of the crowd to come get what you want? Because give me, give me, my name is Jimmy. But you don't go the extra mile. You don't fight the good fight of faith. You're not a disciple. Means I'm a follower of Christ. The, the disciples were the one that got on the boat and went to the other side. The disciples are the one that went with Jesus all the way. 
The disciples are the one that today we're still talking about them because they were the remnant during that time. You with me? The, he, he, the disciples identify us today. Are we the remnant? Are we going the extra mile? Are we going to get in a boat with Jesus? Are we going through the storm? Are we going to trust him? We're going to believe him. We're going to walk with him. I choose to believe. I choose to walk with him. I choose to finish with him no matter what comes my way. Or you just part of the crowd. You just come on church on Sundays and punch a clock and then go. Jesus told the 70, drink my blood and eat my flesh and they were gone. Remember that? They, they just left. They said, oh, no, we can't do this. And he told the disciple, you want to leave too? And crazy Peter, he got hit by lightning. He said, where will we go? You got the words of eternal life. That was deep right there. Peter had some deep moments. Amen? It's the extra mile to the battlefield. The disciples were the remnant. We don't, be, we, we don't want to be the crowd. Too many people spend their time. This is, this is, I want you to understand this because I want you to have spiritual balance. Too many people spend their time focusing on what the devil is doing. I think in Revelation, in the end, they, in the end, I think in the book of Revelation, they throw the devil out on the open market, so to speak, paraphrasing. And the, and the nation said, that was it? That was the stuff that tricked us? That roach? That roach? That ant? Did all this damage and we fell for it? Because in, the devil in front of the majesty and the awesomeness of God, he looks like a roach and he looks like an ant. And man, that, that's a clap right there, people. And think about it. The awesomeness of God, the, maj the majesty of who he is. Think about it. What could compare to that? What can compare to that? Listen, knowing your enemy is important, but knowing the truth of God is even more important. I always know what the de I, I don't always know. I take that back. Let me say, I see what the devil is doing, but that's not my focus. My focus is, Lord, what are you doing, or what do you want me to do? Because in order for me to walk with him, we have to agree. You with me? They have to. There's power in unity. There's power in agreement. You got intercessors that come together, and it's like bunch. It's like a whole bunch of Puerto Ricans drinking coffee. Everybody's talking. <laughs> Everybody's talking. Everybody, everybody got an opinion. Everybody got an opinion. But there's no power in agreement and power in unity. Understand? You need power in agreement, power in unity, in order to make things move in the spirit. That's why when I was in the witchcraft world, I came in agreement. Agreement is a law. Power agreement, power union is a law. It either work, it works the same way in the dark side, it works in the, in the, in the light. You with me? L listen to this, the enemy weapons. These are the enemy's weapons. You ready for enemy's weapons? Let me just say, the enemy's weapons are predictable because you can see them. But what happened was we agree with them. This is what the enemy's weapons are. Listen to what the enemy's weapons. Listen to the enemy's weapons. Something wrong with your backs? You're ducking. <laughs> this is the enemy's weapon. Listen to confinement. Confinement. Enemies weapon confinement, restrictions, and limitations. Let, let me say something quick. A side note. You ready for a side note? I think it's, it's in the book of uh, Exodus. I think Exodus, Exodus right? When, when the biggest showdown, the biggest throwdown, this was, like the, this was like the cribs and the bloods, right? The biggest showdown, right? 
think about it. In chapter 7, chapter 8, the biggest showdown. And I'll just say this real quick. Biggest throwdown. Jesus got Moses. He said, yo, let's go. Strap up. He got Moses. He got Aaron. Now, Moses is 80. Aaron is 81. <laughs> right? He said, go get, go, get the, go, go get the Glock. Right? So it was a, it was a stick. Right? <laughs> He said, go down, go down to Egypt. Go see this dude there, Pharaoh. Go see, go see Willie. Right? <laughs> he goes down there. Wait, a dude is 80, 81. Right? I mean, they pass Social Security. I mean, <laughs> they pass Social Security. They go down, they go down, and they confront Pharaoh. Pharaoh is young. Pharaoh is probably someone in his 40s or 50s. You know, Pharaoh is strong. Pharaoh's holding his own. Pharaoh got, he got, he got, he got Fred and Willie, right? The two magicians, right? <laughs> he got the two magicians. My man showed up. He showed up. He said, let my people go, right? So what he does, throw the stick. What Pharaoh does, say, yo, call, call, call Willie and call Julio. <laughs> right? And this is what I want you to catch. They do the same thing with their magics and their arts. That's how so many people get tricked going in, in, into the occult because the devil got tricks too. They do the same thing. So you go get your cars ready, your harvest coat ready, your fortune telling ready, and the witch is telling you things that are very accurate. Why is she telling you? Not because she knows the future. She knows your past and your present because demons know your past and your present. They monitor you. And then she sets you up for the finale. She says she's going to tell you your future. But your future is, she doesn't know it. But she says she say things that the demon is telling her to say. And then what happened is, she sent that demon with you, because you give him legal rights, you sat in a play you weren't supposed to sit. And then that demon goes with you, he performed all the things that she said. And now you come back and you say, oh my God, you knew my future, it's true. Chaos in my house, chaos in my family. My son got into an accident. Wow, you know the future. And then she'll say to you, we can fix it. You got 10 Gs? And then you say, yeah, you go, you know, you go to Chase and get that loan. Pair the 10 G's, and you know what she do? She called the demon back. So, so when Pharaoh showed up, I mean, Moses and Aaron showed up, first of all, the stick, they went with one stick, right? Take them out. One, they went one stick and one line sermon, let my people go. That was the preaching, right? The stick represents the cross. So now take out, then, then what he said, hit the waters, right? The waters turned into blood. The, demon, the, 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 the devil did the same thing with the magic. He said, and then he said, hit, 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 hit the water and the frost came out, covered the land. The, the witches did the same thing. And this is where Christians get caught up. Listen. And now you say, no, oh my God, what's going on? God won three rounds and the devil won three. And now fear creeps in, doubt creeps in, unbelief creeps in. Because now you're saying the devil got power just like God. And you start questioning God. Because now you see the devil won three rounds, and God won three rounds. And now you, now you got fear because you're not saying the hand of God moved fast enough for you. And now you're in the between the battle, right? And I said this last thing. But then on the fourth round, God told Moses, strike the dust of the earth. And Moses did. And God took, God took nothing and turned it into something. God took dust and made ants. Made ants. He put antennas. He put a blood system in it. He put eyes in it. He put a DNA in it. He put antennas on it. And, and when the magicians try to do the same thing, you know what they told Pharaoh? This must be the finger of God because we can't do it. Amen. You see what I'm saying? So, 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 but when you, when you believe in the battle of your life, that the enemy got the same power, Right? That's when he put restrictions, limitations in your life and confinements. You see? He puts that in your life. Because now, instead of, I said I say this before, instead of you looking like a great white shark, you look like Mimo. In your faith. You with me? And, and, and that's why Christians today, that's why, and, and I finished, that's why Christians today, and I said this, they come to church, but you're still in chain. You read your Bible, but you're still in chain. You, go, you worship, but you're still in chain. You, you, re, you, 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 you worship God, you read your Bible, you go to church, but you're, chain, you're still in chain. What Moses told the Israelites, you can go, 
this far to worship your God. You can go to the desert to worship your God, but don't leave Egypt. So the devil is saying, you can go to church, you can read your Bible, and you can worship God, but don't leave Egypt. Don't leave the condition that it put you in. So, 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 so Christian, they, 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 have a, they have a sense of freedom, but they're not completely free. That makes sense to you? Amen. That makes sense? Are you with me? Are you with me? I just want to finish with this, right? Because listen, listen, you need to know in all stages of uh, any, any, in, in any season, I'm not a product. Listen, I'm not a, I'm not a product on my circumstance or my attacks or the devil. I am a product of the finger of God in my life, whether I am on the mountaintop or I'm in the valley. Because God controls everything. Everything. Even the marshes you believe in. (laughs) The UFOs you believe in. Oh, I believe in aliens. Well, you believe in that, not me. Because the devil got tricks. Oh, we just saw an alien. Man, a legal alien, but not an alien. <laughs> Go to New York. There's a lot of aliens. <laughs> you know what? You know what gets me mad? I, 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 you know, in New York, I know I know some Mexican people, wonderful people. They work two jobs, man, kill themselves, work hard, sometimes three jobs to put money away to get a good lawyer to get the green papers, and they deserve it. And you got people crossing the border for free. And giving them money for free, housing for free. They stay in hotels in New York that in the normal, you couldn't stay. Because it's $2,000 a night, $3,000 a night. You, you with me? It, it, it's not a politics thing. It's evil versus good. That's what that is about. It's demonic versus the kingdom of Christ. And that's what it is. It's not even the people. It's not even the people. I, I don't think people come over, they come over the border in all nationalities. And not, not including people from my all nationalities come over. Then they're holding their flag. I'm like, well, if your country is that good, why you don't stay there? <laughs> well, you're not holding an American flag, right? And my, and my Mexican people, because I mean, I'm a Mexican people now because I live here. But my Mexican people in New York, they work hard, man. They're the hardest working people. And the most honest people in New York City. And, and the, most, the most people that always show up. You got to see my Mexican people in New York City. Blizzard, they're driving bikes to make deliveries. They deserve a green card. They deserve the best. Okay? I go, you go to New York City. Go down there at 10 degrees, 15 degrees, and, and, and watch, watch my Mexican people still out there making deliveries for whatever deli or whatever Chinese joint they're working for. They don't quit. They don't stop. They're diligent. They're honest. They're respectable. And they, earn, they work hard to earn what belongs to them. And you're going to have Julio cross over the border and you're going to give him stuff for free? Get out of here. I can't wait till my Harlem people stop busting some caps. <laughs> just <laughs> let me. I just got in the flesh. <laughs> just got in the flesh there for a minute. Woo! Let me get that devil off of me. <laughs> let me get that devil off of me. Bus cat pastor, in case you didn't know. <laughs> Whew, I just had a moment there. We don't play around in hollow. All right, then 125th by the Apollo, we'll light you up. I'm just saying. I'm out. We're like there's two cops, you know, on 42nd Street, Times Square. They're rolling on the floor with the, with the Venezolanos, you know. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you should have just whew, shot two in the air. Brother, the fight would have been over. You're rolling around, you know, grabbing each other. If you know Todd's moves, the fight would have been over. Anyway, let, let, me, let me finish. I just had a... New York City moment. New York. <laughs> I'm in a New York state of mind. <laughs> Amen. You know, pe- people, you know, I said this last thing. People don't want to hear truth anymore. I don't live by the opinions of people. I live by the truth of God. Amen. Amen. I don't live by the opinions of people. You know, whether it's CNN, NBC, whatever you call it, Charlie Brown, whatever. 
you know, Charlie Brown is crazy. I think he, you know, he does Christmas carols, he does it, and then he backslides. He does, they do Halloween, they do a Halloween Charlie Brown. <laughs> I'm like, Charlie, were you, were you talking about Jesus five minutes ago? Now you holding a, a pumpkin in your hand. What's up, Charlie? <laughs> See? <laughs> but it's a like bipolar spirit, man. <laughs> I mean, you got to pray for Charlie Brown. My Charlie Brown, my boy, you got to pray for Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown, you know, he's, he, he's telling his sister, you know, you know, this word needs Jesus, and then he cutting pumpkins a month later. Some say some Christians I know. We celebrate things because we say it's our culture, it's traditional. Well, then I got one question for you before I hit you with the last note. If your DNA is in Christ, you don't have a culture. You don't have traditions anymore. I'm Puerto Rican. I talk loud. No, I have an angry spirit. <laughs> right? Because you hear, oh, you say Puerto Rican, you habla así, you habla así. <laughs> you like, you know, you need deliverance. Listen to this. He who he he who knee bow he who bows his knee before God can stand in any battlefield. You with me on that? He who bows his knee to God can stand in any battlefield. You with me? I'm almost done. That's why the devil doesn't want you to bend your knee. And I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about spiritually. You can, you can bend your knee physically and get arthritis. I'm talking about spiritually. Bend your knee spiritually. That means surrender all to have it on in Christ. With me? Bend your knee. Bend your knee. Right? And you can, you bend, you, if you, listen, listen to this part. Prayer is not a reaction to tough time. Prayer is your DNA. Thank God somebody got it. Praise the Lord. I guess the night crow is kicking in, huh? <laughs> Prayer. Listen, DNA at all time to the power of the Holy Spirit. You with me? I don't understand how people don't talk about the Holy Spirit anymore. People don't talk about the Bible, the Word of God anymore in the church. They don't mention the blood. They don't mention the crucifixion. All they mention is a better you. I told you yesterday, if you go to church to discover you, then you lost it. Because you better go to church to discover him so you know who you are. Understand? Because if you don't discover him, you will know who you are. Because he holds the pen of your story, not you. Listen, true prayer is a way of life. It's not break glass, emergency. True prayer is a way of life. People are not teaching this stuff. You know, I know David Wilkinson taught me a lot of good stuff. Gary Wilkinson, Nikki Cruz, Pastor Carter, Pastor Tim Delina. These people are teaching. This is what they teach. And this is what they live. And this is how they roll. And this is, this, this is, this is a, the, a biblical view, a biblical foundation about your life and minds. Without this, we can't breathe. Without this, we don't have no spiritual oxygen. Understand? Yeah, I, I can't preach to you candy because you're not a candy store. I can't preach to you about cars because you're not a garage. I can't preach to you about houses. God will give you that when he wants to. But the important thing here is seeking the kingdom first and his righteousness. Because in the end, your house here and your car here going to break down. You're going to have like an off-the-hook car in heaven. They call chariots of fire. You only make one brand. <laughs> and you have, you're going to have a house rent free my Spanish people <laughs> rent free Amen. that means you don't get evicted you don't get a notice hey you're three months behind the rent you don't have Gabriel coming up here, oh, tch, 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 <laughs> and knocking and saying yo you're three rents man when you going to pay up no we're in free. And you know what's awesome about heaven? We don't say goodbye because no one dies. Come on, people. 
God made it good for us. He made it so good for us. He made it so good for us. Ain't that something? In the last, listen, I'm going to bet on this guy named Jesus. I'm going to bet on him. Not because I'm a Christian. I'm going to bet on him. Because if, you, if you're going to get directions to heaven, Buddha can't give it to you. Muhammad can't give it to you. These people give me directions, and I still get lost. Coming here, I get lost a few times. It went to GPS. I get lost coming here. Something, most of the time, when I'm, I'm, I'm walking late because I got lost. I took some turn somewhere. And then somebody tell me, didn't you see the GPS? Didn't you see it was supposed to go that way? Well, that's like, that's a different story. But I know someone that came from heaven and went back. So I believe he knows the way. So I'm going to bet on him. I'm going to bank on him. I'm going to hang my hat on him. There's no other religion that talks about heaven more than the Bible. Talking about coming back, re reincarnated. Or you come back, if you don't behave, you come back reincarnated as a cow. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to be a cow. You come back reincarnated as a rat. I don't think so. There's no reincarnation. There's no, there's no, oh, uh, I, I, I'm back here from my afterlife of seven afterlives that I had. No. The only afterlife is, is the people in prison. They're doing like double life, triple life. <laughs> Understand? So there's, there's no afterlife. There's none of that. Is it, get it right here, pass this test, because there's no makeup and there's no, uh, this test is no, how would you say that? Uh, I give, give me a rain check. We get, need to get it right now. This is the last, and you come up and we pray. Listen, this is the last. Know the Holy Spirit. It is a certainty, a guarantee that no matter what comes your way, you will be strong, you will be courageous, and you will not be dismayed because you know the Holy Spirit. You with me? Knowing the Holy Spirit is the knowledge of God in your life. Because the only person that can teach you the word of God better than anybody else is the Holy Spirit. Amen. So knowing the Holy Spirit, you know the knowledge of God and who God is. Understand? What does it say? Psalm 46, 10, 10, be still and know that he's God. Right? Amen. Listen, th listen, this is how you build your relationship with, with the Holy Spirit. Let me give you, listen. Let me, let me break it down. I gave you some other things yesterday. This is, how, this is another, another facet how you build your relationship with the Holy Spirit. One, be astonished by what God does in your life. Be astonished what he does in your life. Remember, remember everything he done in your life. Be astonished. Lord, I'm astonished what you've done in my life. Be, remember what he done in your life. Observe the hand of God in your life all day, every day. People are looking for quick formulas and patterns to know the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is not known by that. He knows by relationships. And I said this last thing. In order to know the Holy Spirit, listen to this. This is what Jesus said. In order, and I finish with this. In order to know the Holy Spirit, this is what Jesus said. In order for you to know the Holy Spirit, Jesus said this. In order to know the Holy Spirit, this is what God is saying. He said, Jesus said in Matthew 8, 22, Jesus said this. Jesus said, said, Jesus said to him, follow me, right, and allow the dead to bury their own dead. In other words, you know what Jesus was saying? In other words, Jesus was saying, let the things that distract you, the things that keep you busy, that don't produce fruit, that doesn't have purpose, doesn't have significance in your life, let it bury itself. Don't get caught up with the cares of life and the things that steal your time and the things that steal God's moment in your life because those are the dead places that the devil lives and he works from there to bring hindering delay and blockages in your life. 
So when you come here today to the altar, you let the dead bury the dead. Look at your life and look at the things that are insignificant. The things that distract you. The things that keep you busy but don't produce anything. That's what the devil is. That's his masquerade. That's how he plays his game. That's how he plays his plots. Because sometimes we chase the wind. And the wind is going the wrong direction. And then you, in the end of the night, you're like, oh, my God, what did I do today? I don't remember a thing. The devil stole your day. That is the truth of the gospel. Put first what's first. And keep it first. And then cultivate and maintain it so it can finish first. That's how you live for him. To scars and battle. Because when you get to heaven, you know what God's going to do? He's going to ask you two questions and he's going to look at your armor. You better have dents on your armor. If you come up there too polished, <laughs> Gabriel, security. <laughs> Send them the other way. Your, your armor should have dents. You know why? I can prove it to you in the battle. I can prove it to you in the Bible. What Paul said, don't mess with me. I bear the marks of Jesus. Paul said that. Paul said, check out my armor. It got dents on it. I've been proven. I've been trial. I've been tested. Now I go home and get my crown. And not only for me, but for those that follow me. They come after me. Your armor better have dents. Jesus went to heaven. Jesus is the only man in heaven that has scars. That's his armor. Amen. amen. Let, me just, let me just amen myself on that because of you. Mama, I, I, I go like this and you say amen, all right? All right, that's it. <laughs> because I, I need some support. People here falling asleep. When you were in the gang, you were in the streets, you're in the gang. The only way they knew that you were crazy because you fight. Right? Yeah. You got a Yankee hat. You a Yankee fan? No? All right. I went to L.A. and New York and pissed people off. <laughs> Just the way it is. I say, hey, I'm Tupac. I'm back from the dead. <laughs> people say, Tupac's still alive. I don't think so. They said I saw Elvis at the mall the other day. <laughs> they said Michael Jackson is still, still alive. And you know who said that the other day? I was, I was shocked I heard him because he's credible. Trump Jr. Trump Jr., he said he saw, <laughs> so he saw Michael. He said he used to play, he said when I was little, Michael was my next door neighbor. We used to play a tendo together. So he played more than that. <laughs> saying people don't want the truth Michael my, Michael Michael and Prince was my favorite and the rap game Tupac those are my favorite and you don't know listen you might go to heaven and you say oh my god Michael is, a little, Michael is my neighbor because you don't know the last moment someone's going to die who's going to repent so when you can have a family member in coma and you can remind God, for me, my house, serve the Lord. And that person in coma that is tied up with tubes in the hospital, that you can't speak to him, he can't move a finger, God can speak to him. Amen. Never give up. Never give in. Because what you see with your natural eyes. Because God can speak to the dead. God spoke to some dead man four days ago. <laughs> he got up. Didn't he? <laughs> God spoke to someone who was dead. Four days dead. He said, yo. And he had to mention his name because we did it. Everybody get up. <laughs> you told me he had to mention his name because if he didn't mention his name, everybody would have got up. But when God speaks, the devil shuts up. Death can't hold you. Sickness can't hold you. Nothing can hold you. And if you, and if you die, it's a win-win anyway. Amen. It's a win-win. My sister died at 29. It was a win-win. 
My brother died a week before his birthday when, when my mom almost died. Thank God she's still here. But God has it under control. Think about these things, people. Get rid of the dead things. So I have to say. Dead spiritual things, too. What brings clutter into your life spiritually? What brings clutter into your mind spiritually? You know how, the, you know how Spanish people say, you tengo una limpieza en mi casa, you know, spring is here. I don't know your heart, my mom used to say it all the time. I got I to gotta clean because summer's coming. Like, we, you know, I'm like, mom, we, we don't have no furniture. We broke. What are you cleaning? Maybe you're going to have to come and do a spiritual cleaning and remove, out the, remove, out, remove all the dead things completely and fully out of your life. Lord, show me the dead things in my life. It might seem productive to you, but it's dead to God. Let the dead bury the dead. Let the insignificant things walk away from your life. Let the things that, that are hindering, delay, and blockages in your life, let it go. It could be a TV. It could be, it could be you, spending, you spending on, you, you, you live on Netflix. That's, that's dead. Ain't nothing that producing anything. Right? It could be, you know, you could be a fanatic in watching sports. Like I told you yesterday, right? I said yesterday when I go to Kansas City, I'm going to talk trash about the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm going to talk mad trash and watch them get upset. And then I said, but when they talk about God that way, you don't get upset. See? It's a test. You get, uh, you get in an uproar when they talk about your team and your team don't even know you. Because there was a shootout in Kansas City, right? And the only person that gave money, money away was Taylor Swift. The devil gave money away. But you didn't see Malone give money away. You didn't see whatever, whatever that Casey, whatever they call him, he didn't give money away. They, they show up at the news and made a report, said we want to help the families that were in tragedy. You know, we want to help them out. No, they didn't care. They didn't care at all. They don't care about you. The only person who care about you is Jesus, man.